والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وانما توعدون لات وما انتم بمعجزين I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's the only one worthy of praise. I seek his help, his guidance, and his forgiveness. I believe in him and I trust him. I seek refuge in Almighty Allah from the evil of our passions. Indeed, whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him to Al-Islam, no one can mislead him after Allah. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him astray, no one can guide him after Allah. I testify openly that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah Rabbil Alameen. And I testify that Muhammad, صلى الله عليه وسلم is his messenger and the seal of all the prophets. O Muslims, you must know that the best speech is the speech of Almighty Allah, which is the Quran. The best guidance is the course of the Prophet Muhammad, صلى الله عليه وسلم, which is his Sunnah. The worst of all affairs is innovation and addition to the religion of Islam. Indeed, every addition to the religion of Islam will lead to hellfire. I adjure you as well as myself to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability. Fear Allah, have the taqwa of Allah and don't die unless you are in a state of al-Islam. After this, I greet you all with the greeting of al-Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you all. I'd like to welcome you all for continuation of reading from the book Riyad al-Salihin, Garden of the Righteousness by Imam al-Nawawi. Rahmatullahi alayhi. May Allah send mercy in his soul. Ameen. Today, inshallah, we have a new chapter, and this will be chapter number 293, Bab wal Kuffar. This chapter number 293 concerning prohibition of imitation of the shaitan, imitating the shaitan or the disbelievers. Hadith 1634 and Jabri radiallahu an. قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تأكلوا بالشمال فإن الشيطان يأكل ويشرب بشماله رواه مسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has always concerned about this ummah and to be a unique ummah not to be a tale not to be imitating other nations or other criminals or uh, disbelievers or shaitan because it's supposed to be a leading ummah, a ummah of example for others. Therefore, the Prophet ﷺ discouraging them, prohibiting them to act like a shaitan, like a kafir, a man like a woman, or a woman like a man, all these things that it doesn't fit with you as a Muslim, or doesn't fit with your nature. So the Prophet ﷺ said, don't eat with the left hand. Don't eat with the left hand. Why? He said, because shaitan, the devil, the shaitan, Satan, eats and drinks with the left. There are these things from the unseen. We didn't see the shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs the Prophet sallallahu about things like this. And the Prophet is telling us. And from this we understand that the shaitan eats and drinks. And this is the reason that you may eat and there is no barakah in your food. 
Because when you forget to say Bismillah, the shaitan is eating with you. Nevertheless, the Prophet ﷺ say, for us as Muslims, we are not supposed to be eating with the left hand, neither we're supposed to drink with the left hand. Now some people, they want to show that they are so modern and... And now they hold in the knife and the fork is good. You can hold knife and a fork is no problem. But the fork should be here. Even if you have to cut it like this and this, it's still the one that takes the food to your mouth is what? The right hand. This, for you to show like you look so American or that you know what's going on or you are high class people and you need to show that you are a Muslim and that you are proud to be Abdullah or Amatullah. So don't imitate the shaitan. doesn't matter if a shaitan of ants or jinn, we are not supposed to imitate them. Let's go to another hadith, which hadith is number 1636, that reported by Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, إِنَّ الْيَهُودَ وَالنَّصَارَ لَا يَسْبِغُونَ فَخَالِفُهُمْ So here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that the Jews and the Christian they did not dye their hair. As for you, as Muslims, you have to be different from them. And if the Prophet is concerned about us to be different from them, about dyeing our hair, this means for other things, the Prophet وسلم, of course, he wants us not to imitate them. So, a Muslim, if he have a gray beard or a gray hair, male or a female, that they dye their hair, to be a different from the Jewish and the Christian as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he say, so act differently from them. Uh, of course, is that dying, we're going to talk later on about it, can be by using any color with exception of black color. A new chapter, chapter number 294, and this actually what I just was talking about. Propagation of a man or a woman that dyes their hair in black color. This uh, hadith which he reported by Jabir, may Allah be pleased with him, that Abu Quhafa, which is the father of Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu an, been brought in the day of the grand opening or uh, the great uh, opening of Mecca after Fath Mecca, and his beard were snow white. Totally white, not light, okay? But was totally white. So the Prophet ﷺ directed the Sahaba by saying, change it, dye it with something and avoid blackness, okay? So this is the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And we as Muslims should be concerned of following his order. Now in another hadith, or in another section here, we have chapter 295, talking about other things which is prohibited Islamically, and this is called Qaz'ah. And Qaz'ah is a person shaving part of his head and leaving the other one, or cutting the hair short from round and leaving the front longer. All these things consider a form of Qaz'ah and is prohibited. And maybe somebody will ask why. Allah knows best, number one. But Islam will teach us order. Want us to be fair. So you need to be fair with your whole head. So if you shave part, you shave the others. If you leave your hair, you leave the whole thing. And we're going to learn this later on, even about wearing one shoe, not both of them. So this it maybe can be one of the wisdoms that you need to teach you how to be fair, even with your hair. Because this will teach you how to be fair with your wives, fair with your children, fair with other people also. So this chapter concerning the propagation of shaving part of head. And Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma qala naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anil qazh. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbid shaving a part of the head. And in another hadith here, which uh, the Prophet ﷺ saw a young boy, and he had a shave, or some of his head been shaved, and some 
uh, of it was left out. The Prophet ﷺ prohibited them from that. And he said, You have the choice. Remove all the hair or keep all the hair. Uh, last hadith in this chapter, I um, have nothing too much to say about it. It's hadith one, number 1641. The hadith is weak, which is saying that the Prophet ﷺ prohibited woman from shaving her head. Although the hadith it maybe can be correct in the meaning, but as authentication to the hadith, the hadith is not authentic. And we understand a woman is not supposed to imitate a man in any fashion. Will a woman be allowed to shorten her hair? Yes. And the wives of the Prophet Wasallam, some of them they used to shorten their hair and used to reach to the ear bow. Now, another hadith concerning the prohibition of uh, connecting hair or wearing wig, all the things, and this will be chapter 296. And we see that in the verse, which in Surah An-Nisa, verse 117, that the shaitan is saying, Which we will explain what is the shaitan vowing and promising to do. Let's go for a break. Thank you for watching. خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا Learning how to recite the Quran properly Learning the meaning of what we recite Concluding the ahkam from the verses which we recite Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life Would we'll listen to the participants and the guests We'll take your phone calls We're going to recite life We'll listen to your recitation and will correct it according to the rules and regulations which will state in each episode. Now, your dream will come true. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam ala rasulullah. Welcome back. Continue talking about the vow or the promise that shaitan took upon himself when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kicked him out of Jannah and Allah put the curse on him, la'anahu Allah. And what did the shaitan had promised to Allah? He said, la'attakhidhanna min ibadika nasibhan mafruda. Allah cursed him, i.e. the shaitan. And he said, I will take a, po a, a pointed portion of your slave. Verily, I will mislead them. And surely I will arouse in them false desires. And certainly I will order them to slice the ears of the cattle. And indeed, I will order them to change the nature created by Allah. So the shaitan is not going to give up. And he always tried to mislead us, whispering to us, causing us doing haram. And one of the things that he will do, especially with women, but nowadays became men and women, but we are not talking about Muslims, inshallah. But believe me, even with, women, with men, because removing the hair of the face, shaving the beard, is a part of changing the creation of Allah. Because Allah created you with beard. Allah created you with hair in your face. And he ordered you. And this, subhanAllah, in all days, you understand, if a person go to Islamic court and he has no beard, they could not take him. If a person report in hadith and he doesn't have a, a beard, this person, they call him fasik. Okay? That means he is a sinner. He's not reliable enough. They take hadith from him or to take his testimony in Islamic court. Things have changed. Okay? So this is taghir al-khalq Allah. Changes the creation of Allah. And women also do things, you understand? And nowadays we see a lot of things 
for but this is from the whispering of the shaitan and he made this promise to make men and women to be misled by him and to change the nature things that Allah had created in them. The worst thing that we hear, alhamdulillah, is not among Muslims, but we hear nowadays about men try to be women, changing their private parts, having a womb so they can get pregnant, uh, having breasts, all kind of crazy things. But alhamdulillah, we Muslim, we are a distance from this, okay? Alhamdulillah. But we try to remember you, remind you, okay, in case shaitan whispering to you, do not change the creation that Allah had created you. Allah created a man, so stay a man. He created you a woman, stay a woman. Allah give you this or give you that, be happy and content and satisfied with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُنَّ خَطَوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ Don't follow the footsteps of the shaitan. Let's to see one of implementation of this verse is that hadith number 1642 عن أسماء رضي الله عنها أن امرأة سألت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالت يا رسول الله إن ابنتي أصابتها الحصبة فتمزق شعرها وإني زوجتها أفأصل فيه فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم لعن الله الواصلة والموصولة متفق عليه Here is this hadith that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم been questioned by a woman saying O Messenger of Allah I have a daughter who had attacked by a small box and her hair fall off now I want to celebrate her marriage can I get her a wig? The Prophet ﷺ upon this, he said, Allah has cursed the maker and the wearer of a wig. Subhanallah. She was sick. She lost her hair. She got married. She won't celebrate. Still, the Prophet ﷺ did not allow. And nowadays say, oh, but Sheikh so and so, Says okay for a woman to wear a wig for her husband. Subhanallah. Sheikhs doesn't make deen. Sheikhs could not change in the laws of Allah. If the Prophet ﷺ prohibited something, nobody else can make it halal. We want to know from the Sheikh from he where got this information. And the hadith is clear. The woman was sick, she lost her hair, she got married. Say, oh, no, 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 this is because people make a false impression, and after this, you, you, when a man attend, uh, try to marry you, and he see you with a wig, and after this, see your real hair. No, we are not talking about all these things. She was sick, she lost her hair, she got married, want to make celebration. Can my daughter have a wig? He says, the curse of Allah, of the maker, and the wearer of the wig. Subhanallah. The Prophet وسلم, in another hadith in the collection of Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim is saying إِنَّمَا هَلَكَتْ بَنُوا إِسْرَائِيلِ حِينَ اتَّخَذَ هَذِهِ نِسَاؤُهَا The Prophet of Allah sallallahu sallam, is saying I hear Messenger of Allah sallallahu sallam, prohibited from using false hair and saying the people of Bani Israel were ruined, destroyed when their women wear such hair. What's going to happen to us that some of our women, they are not wearing wing only. They wearing pants, they wearing miniskirt, wearing shorts, playing basketball uh, with against men and wearing shorts, all kind of things. Okay? May Allah be merciful on us. May Allah protect us. May Allah shield us that his wrath and his punishment fall in us. Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, in hadith number 1644, is saying, Rasulullah The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa had cursed a woman, maker of, or wearer of wig, and the tattoo, and the one who tattooed, all of them been cursed. 
You could not make income by selling wigs. You could not make income by fabricating and making and manufacturing wigs. You could not do it. You could not wear it. You could not give it as a gift. You could not receive it. Tattoo, writing, making images in your face, in your arms, private parts, wherever you're doing it, all these things is forbidden in Islam. And those who are making the tattoo and those that the tattoo made, made for them is being cursed. And another hadith, which is more in detail than this hadith, but it's the same meaning. Hadith number 1645, reported by Ibn Mas'ud. May Allah be pleased with him. لعن الله الواشمات والمستوشمات والمتنمصات والمتفلجات للحسن المغيرات خلق الله فقلت فقالت امرأة في ذلك أي لابن مسعود وما لي ابن مسعود سين تهير وما لي لا ألعن من لعن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو في كتاب الله قال الله تعالى وما أتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا this حديث the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم cursing those women who practice tattooing and those women who have themselves tattooed and those women who get their hair removed from their eyebrows. Huh? Serious. Doesn't matter if you doing it or somebody doing it to you is haram, 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 you will be cursed. But brother, I'm getting married. Be content with Allah's creation. Don't change Allah, make it straight, leave it straight. Allah make it like this, leave it, make it like this. Do not blaze with your eyebrows by any means and don't pick up or remove anything from it because it's haram, it's serious haram, the curse of Allah will be falling in you. And al mutafallijati lil husn women who try to make the space between their teeth, not because they have a medical problem with their teeth, no, but they don't it so they can look nice. So when can she smile? Now you can see the space and now oh mashallah, you have a beautiful smile, sister. Oh thank you, brother. <laughs> don't do this. And he said Wal Mutafalijat Lil Husn for purpose of looking nice. Okay? This has also been cursed. And Ibn Mas'ud say, Why I could not curse those whom Allah had cursed? And the Prophet cursed. Okay? Because it's recorded in the book of Allah that whatever the Prophet of Allah gives you, that take, and whatever he forbid you, from that stay away. So don't tell me, oh, it's not in the book of Allah. Is this hadith? And somebody comes and say, oh, the hadith is not authentic. No. Whatever Allah forbid is equal to what the Prophet forbid. Whatever the Prophet forbid is equal to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forbid. So stay away, my dear respected sister. From having, changing your eyebrows, from making a space between your teeth for purpose of looking good, all these things, or having tattoo, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from his disobedience and keep us away a distance from his cares. Next chapter concerning removing the gray hair. And this chapter number 297 عن عمر ابن شعيب عن أبي عن جدي رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا تنتف الشيء فإنه نور المسلم يوم القيامة The Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying do not black out gray hair for they are the Muslims light on the day of the judgment doesn't matter if you are a male or female doesn't matter if you're in your beard in your mustache, in your head. Leave it. This will be a light for you in the day of a judgment. Let and tiff with shave. Okay? Do not block out gray hair. Another hadith that the Prophet sallallahu is saying, Man amil amala laysa alayhi amruna fahuwa rad. Anybody who do something contrary to our way, the Islamic way will be rejected. So all the things, shaving beard, removing and pluck out your gray hair, uh, playing with eyebrows, uh, making a space, all the things is not Islamic behavior, is not Islamic manner, 
is contrary to the teaching of Islam, to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu As a result, these things will be rejected. May Allah keep us always on the Sunnah. Do our best to please Allah and to gain the love of his Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Until I see you next time, I'm your host Muhammad Sad Adli from Columbia, South Carolina. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa an. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. And Allah knows best. Thank you for watching.